Yo, 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 it's ODB, our lifestyle podcast. Finally going to get you guys with another flip through. And uh, looking forward to this one. I've been waiting to get to this episode or this issue rather. And uh, let's dive right in. But um, what I want to do here is remind everyone to hit up our website, ourlifestylepodcast.com. If you go to the drop down here and you select shirts, yeah, you'll land here and then you can hover over all of these and you'll see that we do have a couple on sale. We've got the Live Life Topless. We only have a few of those left and then we have the Mini Truck and Isn't Everything. It's the only thing. Those are actually $10 and the rest of the stuff is regular price, but there are some other deals. Don't forget, you can go here to the categories and um, we can check out the Time Machine merch, which is new. And then of course, we also have the metal signs. These tend to sell out and uh, those are aluminum. They're pretty cool. But um, as we jump into this episode, I keep saying episode, as we jump into this issue, uh, what I want to do is uh, reinforce, we're kind of going over this one, right? So it's October 95, and it's a good one. Now, uh, if you watch one of my recent videos, I talked about how I store my mini truck and magazines. I've got them in these binders, and uh, it makes it super easy to get to the issues that I need. And uh, this one... Um, is one of the ones that's bulging a little bit, and I hate that, but um, it's it's just kind of the way I do for right now. But um, this uh, issue, if I say that right, uh, like I said, is a really good one. You're kind of looking at a few things. So you basically got October 95. You've got five features, I think. RA gets the cover. It's one of their 33 covers. So if you've ever wanted to know how many covers Relaxed Atmosphere had, rest assured it's 33. And uh, it's actually Courtney who shot it, and it's his 14, one of his 14 covers. So, you know, Courtney worked at the magazine a long time. Rest in peace to Courtney Hallowell. Um, but, you know, the thing that I'll tell you is, you know, he did a ton of features, but credit-wise for the covers, he did uh, 14, and this is one of those. So I know this is a fan favorite. I'll kind of go through it uh, the best I can. You can see I am indoors here. Man, it is hot in Florida. Get your typical ads here. And I like to go to the table of contents. You've got on the upper right, that uh, this is a C.R. Lawrence uh, slider. Kind of see everything here. And I always like looking at the on the cover. It talks about Jeff Roberts' Magenta Magic Toyota. Uh, Kim Hitchcock as the model. Photo credits go to Courtney. I think I'm getting used to this Hollowell. Insert photo is Shartsis. Uh, on these covers, when I broke all these down, um, although sometimes there's multi-vehicles and things like that, I did split that stuff out. But like if there's an insert photo, I didn't really count that as like a cover, so to speak. Although that is a, a pretty awesome insert photo there from Shartsis, which uh, he's been on OLP before. I try not to bend them right there either whenever I um, open them. You got the cool MT logo here, Stage 1 Customs. And I do apologize in advance. There's going to be a little bit of a shadow based upon where the light is here. Um, what I would also remind you is I often watch YouTube on my Apple TV. Whether you're watching it on the computer or your phone, if you do want to see it in a higher resolution, I do record these in 4K, you can tap the setting and drop it to 4K or up it to 4K, I should say. Look, Body Glove, Massimo, Oakley. Check that out. Sharks is his little. But um, I say that because the default most of us have on our YouTube is, of course, to the the highest quality based upon the streaming um, bandwidth. So, you know, like if there's something that you're trying to like zoom in on or get a screenshot of, you know, please, by all means, bump it up to 4K if you've got the bandwidth. Um, you know, I do it sometimes on a, on a video I'm watching and then I'll bump it back down to, to automatic. Here you have spring... Slam and Jam 95, uh, Severely Slammed Mazda, Selective Style, Trophy Garden. And uh, just really, this was one I always enjoyed looking at, although the first opening page there, you, you basically have black and white. Um, I love the color photos here. you got the blazer. You've got the wire wheels. I loved how they would put the old mini truck and logo kind of there. And I love the layouts, like with the square boxes and stuff, real professional um, it seemed like for a while towards, you know, in some issues, like the show coverage got a little bit more, I don't want to say sloppy. It just was like 
photo, 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 photo. And, and I'm sure it's because the staff over time was cut down, but I always enjoyed when they actually had a layout like this. Here you have one of the features, BAD. This is Chuck Rice's 89 Toyota 4x4. Marty McFly, eat your heart out, right? And uh, Sean Carlson shot this one. Uh, here you've got Slammin' and Jammin' 95. I never made it to this show, but I know a lot of people that have. And they said it was pretty awesome. Minis and a hot air balloon. A dime with the Texas tail. Killer 720, man. The colors, the wheels, how low it is. Topless. I mean, that thing is timeless right there. Real clean S10. That wagon dough. Tattoo. And here you can see Todd Crowder's Black S10 Mega System. Uh, you can see where the write-up, look how big the write-up was here. Damn, look at that. Um, look how big the write-up was here. And, you know, I, I did enjoy, I would read this stuff. But, you know, as times went on, you know, you see show coverage, uh, the write-ups, you know, has, has kind of, you know, it's not as in-depth. Uh, I always loved these wheels here, the American Racing. The logo in the middle, uh, I always thought was pretty cool, and you'll still see that from time to time. You got Air Slam helper bags, and then you got Colorado Custom, Colorado Custom wheels. I believe that's the Trinidad. That's a killer wheel. I wouldn't mind running one of those one day. I remember that from the catalog. Doing the electric slide, so CR Lawrence, you know, you guys have heard me talk about them a lot um, for the roll down back window, which was the power light. Uh, this one is the slider, which is ultra popular. I do believe they still manufacture this, the power slider. And um, you could imagine back in the day, uh, these were super popular products. I'm sure they still kind of are to a certain extent in the aftermarket. There's their kind of famous little rocker switch. Uh, very similar, if not the same, to what they used in the power light. But um, with the OEMs, you know, having the roll-down windows and the sliders and stuff, I'm sure for the newer stuff, it's just not something that uh, that you see very often. Famous wheel ad. I know many of us looked at these and circled the wheels we wanted. Here you've got Low Rock. So if we look up here, we immediately see it's an 83 Ford Ranger. Kind of classic for the time. Crazy engine. Kind of race-inspired interior. Look at all the detail. Hydraulic tilt bed reveals the true detail. So pretty cool stuff. Um, I do like doing these outside more, but it's just, it's just too hot right now. And we still haven't... We've been plugging away on the electric. It's not ready yet. Um, if you look here, back to school clothing guide. Um, this was pretty cool you know you basically had kind of the lifestyle aspect of the scene and i do enjoy looking back at this kind of stuff because it kind of captures that time period uh god pay phones um it's always intriguing to be how styles do change uh, from baggy clothes to preppies to, you know, whatever. You know, we all kind of hung out with different kind of people in high school. And uh, it just kind of, again, it kind of captures that time period. Kind of a little time capsule. Different uh, shoes and people were wearing Doc Martens and Vans. And a lot of us still kind of rock the same stuff we used to. Uh, I do like seeing a lot of the... Old school brands coming back. They even listed the prices. And then, you know, that was kind of a cool little thing. I don't know that they did another thing of that. Uh, this truck is one that I've always liked. Um, seems like I've seen it somewhere recently. I don't know if it was in show coverage or it was a feature. I'm trying to remember. But I fell in love with the centerline wheels. The first wheels I bought for my S10 were centerline. I have that original receipt somewhere. I still remember ordering them, and uh, man, they just had some, I mean, even those, man, they just had some classic designs, and I do believe that they're not really, someone explained it to me at Mini Nats, I think maybe they're not focusing, maybe they're on awful road wheels more now, I, I don't know, but 
someone had inquired about the smoothies that they, of course, made pretty famous, centerline smoothies, and um, they said, well, if you ever really needed one, we could we could help you out, but we really don't, uh, I don't think that they produce them anymore. I heard that rumor a long time ago, and I wasn't sure if that was true. That's why I mentioned it. Here you got a killer Mazda. Four D eyes, super clean. They, they hinted at this one in the table of contents under Nation's Finest. Love the little Sonic eye. What a clean S10. I mean, if you look at even to today, the wheels, topless, tilt bed, roll pan. I mean, dude, classic truck. And I sometimes wonder if some of these are still around. I mean, we know that they are uh, probably to a certain extent. Famous truck. Isn't that the one Jody Hall did? Um, it's got to be Carlisle. Epic. Epic times. Uh, it is a little bit easier to go through these here indoors, so... But it's been, there's been a little too long of a break. I, I kind of want to just get through and, and get back on track. Um, I did the the time machine to, to coincide with the merchandise, but uh, you know I'm back doing these. No more hangups, of course. Um, showing some some different stuff with Stage One Customs, bringing things up a little higher on the trucks. Uh, here is getting it all together. And uh, SCMTC, the Mini Truck Council, and uh, they, last weekend they had their, uh, they're still doing it. Southern California Mini Truck Council. Always takes me a second. I got to register that acronym in my head. Those wheels do. Um, just super clean stuff. There it is. Southern California Mini Truck Council. I asked someone why the event that they had last week, it didn't seem like it's promoted super well, but, um, you know, I would have been happy to, to kind of share the information out there, hopefully next year. Jeff Roberts, Griffin, Georgia. So he's putting Georgia on the map pretty early in the mini trucking days. Super clean truck, love the background. Um, and you kind of get the vibe here, although it's not, you know, bodied. You get that, I get a little bit of that Pat Nickel uh, vibe, super cool super clean you've got a mix between a real clean um rear end housing and interior and speaker box and blow through i mean that's like boom all in one which uh, i dig it loved how they would always again put the mini truck in you know something simple they'd throw that little logo in there super clean definitely a, a truck that uh deserved to get on the cover if you look at all the detail no 4WD for wheel drive. And look how many feature or how many pages it had. Super dope. And you can kind of see it in the front three quarter shot, but it's got the sunroof in it. Love those sunroofs. And the 16 inch Ford Probe GT wheels. Um, it's kind of cool to see. You know, I've broken down how many different wheels have been on the covers as well. And that's one of those that uh, is kind of like a factory, basically a factory wheel, chrome-plated factory wheel. Riding around, um, I do sometimes get people asking, hey, my dad's truck was in one of these. Kip Johnson's 86 and a half. And this, if I could go back in time, I would definitely buy one of those. Pretty expensive, I'd say, for the time. I don't know how many they really sold, but... Pretty cool thing. Little piece. Opposites attract. Powder coating. Still a big thing. Still super popular. Going through this one a little slower. KMC here. Seems like it was kind of like when they started transitioning, you know, their brand from kind of the old school. They definitely took over, it seemed like, in the late 90s, early 2000s with their stealths and all those different wheels. 
exotic explosions. Again, anytime you can have show coverage, uh, Mike Slade shot this stuff, you could see there. But uh, anytime you could have show coverage and, you know, your truck got in here and it was a color photo, how freaking awesome was that? Super popular back in the day, rodeos. And then here you have some window art. So you have Syndicate, Minis, and Compacts, Fatal Fantasies, Insane Toys. Pretty cool stuff. That one's pretty awesome how it ties into the, the mural. Uh, Chris Lopez, who had the truck that got me in the, the scene, he had a mural on his 88, I think it was 88 Mitsubishi Mighty Max. Um, and uh, I was, I was, you know, would see it on the tailgate. So here I wanted to point out Air Syndicate. Um, what's awesome is we've had Craig on. Craig Frazier, and you know, it's iconic because you can kind of see what the way his hair was and stuff. But, um, you know, you talk about a pretty cool tech article showing how they would do the painted rear windows. I mean, that's like a, a lost art. You know, some guys are still doing it. But shout out to Craig Frazier. We just ran his audio as a best of, and I asked him about coming back on, and he said, yeah, absolutely. He's a good dude, man. I mean, it's crazy to think that we, you know, partner up with some of these guys over all, all these years. And then here's where the gold's at. Cool stuff. Peter, shout out to Peter. He's a big supporter of the channel. He sent me a couple of drawings that he's done, and it reminds me of this, the mini truck and sketch pad. How freaking sick. And uh, he did say I could share some of them, so I need to do that sometime. I've got some ideas on how to do it. Nasty Habit, super clean. This was Charles Barfield's. I mean, dude, even that today is is still popping. And then check that out. Look how clean and how much detail. The top, the sides, the inside. I mean, dude, that's a lot of work right there. And you might laugh and go, oh, that's basic by today's standards. Man, that's freaking clean. Tweed, forget about it. I love it. You're never going to change my mind on that. Here's Midwest Truck. Nationals. Pretty cool layouts, you know, even though they're kind of squares, you know, it gave that little bit of a border, which I thought was like pretty damn professional. Mike needs to do, what do you even call those? The hinge deals, the hinge Lambo deals. Mike slacking with banana hammock. He needs to step his game up. Wait till you guys hear the new episode Friday, man. He starts talking shit about Mazdas. Talking about his Mazdas better than anyone's out there. <laughs> uh, I mean, look at that. El S10 or El Camino. And then Chop Top deal. Uh, this was cool. Again, the AIM giveaway truck. I kind of remember, I think, when they gave that away. I think it, I remember them talking about, you know, there, there are actual winners. So this I always love, the mini laughter. So you got uh, notable quotables. Brian McCormick, shout out to BMC, notable quotables, Courtney, rest in peace. Beavis from stage one, I need TP for my bunghole. Not available due to excessive drooling. And then, of course, Courtney there on the right. Loved what's in the CD changer. Kind of gives you insight into that time period. Here you've got Daytona Spring Swing. Super popular back in the day, you know, the Daytona um, Spring Break Nationals and, and stuff like that. I didn't go to a lot of those. And then this was from Truckin. I remember seeing this. And um, check this out Pro Street Truckin, Pro Street and High Performance Sport Trucks. So uh, this, I think I might actually have that issue. I remember this truck, but look on sale October 17, 1995. But um, I have not really del d dived in too much to the rear covers, but Soundstream had a ton of these. And if I flipped through this binder, you'd be amazed at how many. I mean, they spent a lot of money on marketing back in the day. I mean, a lot. So with that being said, I forget what number we're on now. Was this? Uh, you'll see it in the title, okay? I'll have to look at my database 
Um, I forget if it's issue 46, but I'll put it in there. You'll see it in the description. And then if you look in the description, I'm pasting in there all of the features. They're kind of bullet pointed, the best formatting I can do. That's all in there. Um, a little bit of detail about the cover truck. So I literally am taking everything from my database and I'm putting it in. I do have to go back to some of the early flip throughs and do that. Um, I started that maybe 10 or 15 or 20 in, uh, something like that. But eventually you'll be able to see every single flip through here on YouTube. Go in the description, see every feature name, blah, blah, blah. You know it. Uh, lastly, I just want to thank uh, the West Coast Influence for the continued support at our lifestyle podcast please if you can go out to uh minitruckfilm.com pick up a copy blu-ray or dvd this one's signed by smiley pascal with the ranger and radar as well uh that was radar's truck over there i think he sold and of course he executive produced and uh oversaw this project it's his project minitruckfilm.com odb we got you peace